Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the McFarlane Page Puncher Hush Batman. Now, before you get really excited, this is not part of the 7 inch McFarlane DC Multiverse line. This is part of the 3 inch line. This is a blue and gray Hush Batman, and he looks to have the same god awful expression as the 7 inch version. I am not into 3 inch scale figures. I only collect 6 and 7 inch scale stuff, but I really wanted to see what these were all about. I absolutely love the McFarland DC Multiverse line, so I'm curious what these McFarland offerings are going to be like, but my expectations are quite low. Looks like maybe 5 points of articulation. Now, I essentially despise a scale like this, as it just doesn't fit in with my entire collection, but that's just me. I know there is a market for stuff like this out there. This also comes with a comic book, hence the name Page Puncher. It's supposed to be like the character came right out of the book. This is Batman number 608. It is the first issue in the Hush storyline, and that's part of why I bought this figure. Batman 608 is quite a rare book. This is going to be a unique print to this action figure. I don't actually have a first print of this comic with this cover. I've got a couple of other reprints. For a guy who's a comic collector like myself, I have a solid run of Batman from about number 74 all the way through the end, 713, and I don't have a first print of 608, so it'd be nice to add this to my collection. So let's go and check out the packaging. It's in this plastic clamshell type thing. You can see at the top, McFarlane Toys, DC, it's got a little area there to hang it on to a hook. I found this thing at Target. There was a whole side display of these hanging up, but Batman was the only one I was going to get, and I really wasn't even planning to get this one. It begins here. Batman includes an English comic, Page Punchers, ages 6 plus, Batman by DC. Here he is, blue and gray Hush Batman. Really hope they release a 7-inch version. He looks more or less like a shrunken down version of the 7-inch scale guy. The cape has the same pose. He's got the same expression on his face, but that's not what this is. This guy has almost no articulation, at least upon first glance, but we'll check that out. Now I thought to myself, you know, if I see these at the store and I like how they look, I may pick them up, and that is not the case. I saw this at the store, and I thought it looked pretty bad, and I still picked it up. I'm just a crazy Batman collector like that. I couldn't help myself. Backside here, you can see some advertisements of more recent comic stories. DC Universe, barcode, in case that helps anybody. I've seen this display at more than one Target store locally, so they're hitting all over the country right now. And I did actually get two of these things. So say what you want. I'm a crazy Batman collector. I have almost no interest in this figure, but I bought him twice. A, I wanted the comic to open to add to my comic collection. And I wanted to get this package to keep unopened in my complete unopened Batman collection. Don't really care for the one I'm going to open. I may end up liking him. We'll see. Going to keep one of these comics sealed and one of them open for my comic wall. So from that point of view, it kind of makes sense. I also wanted to open one up or review it for you guys because I know there's a lot of curiosity about this line. Personally, I'm really excited for the 7-inch page punchers. Those are supposed to be hitting around mid-July at Target stores but we'll see how accurate that is. I imagine we'll be seeing reportings of sightings of those any day now. So no further ado, let's open them up. All right, now we got this figure and comic out of the package. Here they are with all their accessories laid out. He comes with absolutely no accessories, but we already knew that. Now this figure is tiny. He is incredibly small, three inches tall. I can't think of any DC line that's ever been that small before. I despise the 4-inch scale, and this thing is way smaller. I imagine McFarland is not allowed to make 4-inch scale figures because of Spin Master at retail. And this guy is damn sure at retail. Whole display at numerous Target stores. So let's take a look at him. Starting with his head here. Has that horrible expression, same as the McFarland figure. I mean, this thing doesn't look bad for what it is. It's just very small. And why do I want just one random 3-inch Batman figure with no action figure world for him to play in? That's just how I collect and how I think of stuff. 
it's kind of cool novelty with the comic. I can see this maybe going on someone's desk at work. No oval around the bat symbol. Large. Utility belt looks great. He's got the fins on his gloves. Looks like ball joints in the shoulders. Waist articulation, neck articulation, and then T crotch style hips. Cape looks just like the 7 inch figure, and we will compare them in this video. I mean, it's not a bad figure, but it's just not something that I collect. Now let's check out the comic. Like I said before, this is a reprint of Batman number 608. This uses the original cover, and neither of my reprints have that cover. So let's take a quick look. DC, Batman, number 608, Jeff Loeb, Jim Lee, S. Williams, it begins here, the hush story, Batman perched up in a gargoyle, I actually did my own recreation of this shot, and here's that recreation right here, I did this with a Mafex figure, not spot on, but still kind of cool, so this book here, the backside completely gives away that it's a reprint, these stories all took place far more recently than hush. DC Universe, Infinity, Comic Library. I guess it's some sort of place you can read comics online. Inside, Batman Hush. I know a lot of you guys are going to be familiar with the story. A lot of nice artwork. Really cool comic. Here are the other reprints I have of Batman 608 for many years. This has been my placeholder. Notice it doesn't have the number up there. I just wrote a marker on the outside of the bag and board. This is a New York Post exclusive. The book was very popular and had a lot of different reprints. I mean, the New York Post making a version of this is pretty unusual. But the cover is not the same as the standard cover. Then, pretty recently I got this. It was a $1 reprint of Batman 608. Once again, not the standard cover. I would love to have a first print of Batman 608 that looked just like this, but that thing's going to cost you a pretty penny nowadays. Like I said, I've got first prints of 605, 606, 607, 609, 610, and everything else, just not 608. Now, I may have gotten this thing more so for the comic than for the figure, but I imagine most people will be getting it for this little guy here. Now, we already took a quick look at him. This guy has six points of articulation. I expect it to be a five point of articulation figure. So just a closer look at his face. He has that weird angry expression. The same as the seven inch McFarlane Hush Batman, which I think is very odd. We will take a look at both those shortly. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the comic and the figure, now let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, he's standing right at about 3.0 inches tall, which can translate to about 7.5 centimeters. Now let's check out his articulation. Start with his head here. Of course, it can rotate from side to side, but that's all it can do. His arms, I thought they would be able to go up and down, and they can, but they can do a little more than that. Ball joint goes out about that far. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. He does have one gripping hand here, in case you have some really small battering he can hold. His waist swivels around, and in both legs go forward that far, and back about that much. So we have one, two, the waist, three, shoulders, four, five, and the neck, six points of articulation. Now I wanted to check him out, next to the McFarland Hush Batman. He's a wee little thing next to him, isn't he? Now their pose is very similar. They both have that crazy, angry expression. Their capes are molded pretty much exactly the same, which I find very interesting. You'd almost thought they shrunk down their 7-inch Hush Batman for this, but they didn't. The articulation is completely different. This guy's advertised as 22 points of articulation, and this guy has 6. And you know what? It is more than the five points that I expected. This figure is so small, it's almost like an action figure with this McFarland 7 inch Batman. I can see Batman saying, It's not a doll, it's an action figure! Here's Batman sitting Indian style on the floor, playing with his Batman doll. I mean, action figure. 
Here's a closer look at this three inch scale Hush Bamut's face. He has an awful angry expression. And here's a closer look at the seven inch scale Hush Bamut's face. Pretty much exactly the same expression. But you know what this page puncher Batman did better than this one? They didn't fuck up the elbows. Little page puncher here, giving an awkward glance toward the larger Batman after that comment. And once again, here's the seven inch scale McFarland Hush Batman next to the three inch scale McFarland Hush Batman. It is a big difference. Here he is next to the DC Direct Hush Batman. That guy's also seven inch scale but a little bit smaller than McFarlane figures, and they made plenty of variations of this. Black and gray version, blue and gray version, and black and white version. And here he is, next to the blue and gray Mafex Hush Batman. Little closer, still twice as tall. And of course, they made more than one variation of this Hush Batman. Now I wanted to check him out, next to some other smaller scale Batman figures. I don't collect any 4 inch scale stuff, and originally, that's what I thought these page adventures were going to be, 4-inch scale. Guess I didn't read the listing properly. I've gotten some 4-inch figures over the years from different various reasons. Here he is, next to a couple of Mattel, Dark Knight, 4-inch Batman figures. Way too big to go with this page puncher. And here, next to a Mattel, 4-inch Arkham City Batman. And with a couple of Mattel, Batman Unlimited figures, also 4-inch scale. And then next to a Spin Master 4-inch scale Batman. Here he is with the 4-inch scale Spin Master Bat Cycle behind him. It is way too big for him. Not even close. Now let's check him out. Next to some smaller scale Batman villains that might work with this figure. Here he is next to the 4-inch scale Spin Master Clayface. Clayface is usually a large deluxe oversized character, so he's a little bit bigger than this guy, and it kind of works. These guys actually look pretty good together. And next to a larger 4-inch scale clay face, this is from the Mattel Batman Unlimited 4-inch line. And here, next to an Imagine X clay face, who seems way too big next to him. And you know what? I had to do it. And now, next to a Funko Pop clay face, as you can tell, I'm a pretty big fan of Clayface. Here's this Batman, next to a 4-inch scale Mattel, Arkham City, Solomon Grundy, Killer Croc, and Clayface. These guys are supposed to be enormous, but they frankly look way too big next to this Batman. Here's this 3-inch Hush McFarlane Batman, next to several different 7-inch scale McFarlane DC Multiverse Batman figures. I much prefer this larger scale. And just to be a little bit more overdramatic, here he is, next to the McFarland DC Multiverse Swamp Thing and Titan Joker. So overall, I'm gonna have to just say this figure sucks, but I'm a little biased as I really don't like anything smaller than six inches tall. But that being said, there are a bunch of different four inch Batman figures over the years, and this guy's far too small to work with them. It's a unique thing, page punchers in the small scale. You get the comic, you get the figure, not for world building, just for collecting. And the fact that this thing is $10, I mean, yeah, maybe somebody's going to buy it for their kid, but it is an absolutely terrible value at $10. This thing is just so damn small. The comic alone makes it a decent value. I just got this to kind of test the waters, see what it's all about. And it was maybe a little bit better than I expected, but not by much. It's actually smaller than I thought it was going to be, but a little bit more articulated. If I were to rate this figure, I'm probably going to give him a 3 out of 10. Because it's so small, poorly articulated, the sculpt is halfway decent. Eh, 3 out of 10, because he's 3 inches tall. And you know what? I'll bump that up to a 4 out of 10, because they didn't fuck up his elbows like they did on the 7 inch version. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.